Let's talk about the Cataclysm because this is a globally changing event on the yes. world of Kryn. There, uh, basically, an a asteroid hits Kryn and it completely changes the continent of Ancelon. So yes. it's not like a it's not like a gentle cataclysm, <laughs> right? Like like there is <laughs> like all those big, soft cataclysms. There's a giant maelstrom where it hit. There used to be a city there that is now gone. Like there is a portal into the abyss. Like yes. this is like a very massive event. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and why it's, it's kind of important to the setting? Absolutely. So the Cataclysm is a historic event that happened in Kryn that the ripples of which is still affecting uh, the modern day world and then the campaign that uh, players will be playing in. The, the short version of what happened is that there used to be a, a very magical nation called Istar, where the ruler of that nation, the king priest, uh, claimed to be on par with the gods and made uh, demands of the gods that they did not favor. And after a series of events, uh, the gods got fed up with it and decided that uh, they were going to give uh, humanity and the races of Kryn a few chances to stave off the Cataclysm. Those things did not work out so terribly well, and they cast down the fiery mountain upon Kryn, obliterating the nation of Istar, and then essentially casting the entirety of the world into a centuries-long series of Dark Ages. Uh, not just the shape of Kryn was changed, but then also the various uh, peoples of Kryn went into isolation, and then monsters became more pervasive, and everything sort of broke down. It's only been within the last several decades and centuries that really the peoples of Kryn are starting to get things back together, realizing that there are others out there starting to reach beyond their borders uh, and trying to create a more unified world. But that's when the Dragon Queen returns and that's when her forces decide there is a power vacuum that Istar once filled, that the Knights of Salamnia once filled, uh, that other powerful forces once filled. That could be us, and they start spreading out. And this is, after the Cataclysm, there's also like an absence of healing magic too. So this is just like, it's like suddenly there are no hospitals kind of, like there's yes. no healing magic. So that has like changed the landscape of the world as well. Absolutely. So there were pl plagues and famines and all kinds of, it's really interesting because the the Dragonland setting in in a way is a post-apocalyptic setting. Like the height of civilization is in the past. So even in the course of Shadow of the Dragon Queen, the characters will encounter things that are perfectly normal in many other settings, like massive towers or like like mighty city walls and those are things that aren't that common um, among the like scattered hamlets and communities. Uh, but perhaps the most obvious is that magic tends to be more of a rarity. It's not unknown, it's not a legend, but when it comes to like wizards and whatnot, they're not terribly common. Uh, even more so are the various deities and healers. So having somebody who claims to know about these old gods or even more so has a rapport with them and can even channel their magic, it's incredibly rare to the point of being miracles. And that experience is something that players can create characters who are among the first having relationships with the deities of Kryn and that makes them even more remarkable. Yeah, it's interesting that the, the calamity allows players to not know anything about this setting <laughs> because, like, so much, so much that you're used to in D and D that, like, maybe you would, yeah, you would have known this, you would have known that. I'm like, well, that wasn't <laughs> like a lot of people don't think these things exist anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. Like we know from many past stories that there are characters who bring back the healing magic of a certain god or like members of the Dragon Queen's army who are fanatics of the Dragon Queen and bring her uh, sinister magic back with them. But 
what is the story of the first character to bring back the power of the god of, of knights, Karajoloth, or Paladine, or any of these other deities, that story isn't really told. And that's a story that DMs have the opportunity to go to their cleric players or their paladin players or whatever have you and be like, choose your deity and you are among the first people that this god has spoken to in potentially hundreds of years. Uh Conversely with Tiamat, there is Paladine, yes. you know, uh, who in the books is also Fizban, who is also uh, Bahumut, and tell me about this figure, because this, this god also comes back, along with the other gods. Yes. So, very much DMs are given the opportunity to choose what deities have a focus in their campaign, and really, the focal deities for the adventure are the deities that your characters choose to interact with. Um, Paladine is an obvious choice. Like, he is the foil to uh, the Dragon Queen. He is, he is Bahamut. He is the, um, uh, the, the virtuous knight and whatnot. And he's this legendary character who in the past has always uh, been the foil to uh, to Kesis. But if you choose to, you know, focus on other deities, Kira Joleth, Habakkuk, um, any of the deities of magic, so on and so forth, those are also options. And through your characters, they'll have a major role in the adventure. All of that being said, um, there are places of power that you'll encounter in the course of the campaign, um, holy places of the old gods where you'll get the opportunity to see vestiges of their power. Uh, Sirion, the god of flame, has one. Habakkuk, the, one of the gods of nature. Um, but then also there is a temple of Paladine where uh, if you perhaps might happen to have come across a legendary broken artifact that is particularly <laughs> useful against evil draconic threats, that might be a good place to see it reforged. Yeah, there's a number. There's a number of magical items in Dragonlance, and uh, there are a few and far between. But that's always like kind of a heavy focus. Bob has said there is the Dragonlance itself. Yes. Which we've 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 got in Fizban's Treasury of Dragons. Bob has said the Dragonlance will be making an appearance here. Uh, how much is that tied into the story? Uh, so the campaign setting is called Dragonlance. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so, so it's good for it to show up. <laughs> yeah. Um, we felt like folks might want to actually get their hands on one. Um, and they'll have the opportunity to do that. And it is a powerful weapon, um, but it's also a weapon that has fallen into legend. And there are not many of them left. And the methods of making them have uh, largely been forgotten. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's none of them still just laying around. Um, and in one particular instance, you have the opportunity to come across one that is not just broken, but also cursed for the crimes that were once committed with it. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to explore is that the deities of Kryn were not just, hmm, all the mortals sort of get in, they're, they're sort of annoying us, let's just blow up that planet. We really wanted to explore, yes, Istar was bad, but that doesn't mean that that was provocation for a world scouring cataclysm. Uh, we know the story of Lord Soth was given the opportunity to uh, prevent the cataclysm, but even that, Oh, so we were going to blow up the planet. We'll give this one guy one chance <laughs> right. and maybe we won't. That also was a little like, all right, so is that the story of the gods of Kryn? That they gave humanity one chance or they gave the people of Kryn one chance to stave off the cataclysm and that one guy fell down? And then world scouring cataclysm? 
Um, so one of the stories that we tell uh, in Shadow of the Dragon Queen is that there were ul ultimately multiple chances that the gods gave the people of Kryn to stave off the cataclysm. And each time they failed. It was not just once. It was also this instance, in that instance, and ostensibly many other instances. And due to the environment, due to the forces of evil, due to whatever it was, the gods finally came around to. All right, maybe we hit the reset button on this. Um, in a way that still isn't fantastic, but is not just, all right, over forever. So one of the stories that we see in this is uh, another hero that was given the opportunity to uh, prevent something terrible from happening, and instead of perhaps taking a more even-handed route, uh, did something abominable with a holy artifact, and as a result of that, perhaps through one more grain of sand on the side of the, on the side of the scales marked the cataclysm. Right, right. So, uh, you'll have the opportunity to find that cursed dragon lance, and if you carry it with you, if you do the right things in the course of the campaign, you may have the opportunity to redeem it and be its be the the wielder of it that it always should have had. What, what levels are, are this adventure for play? Uh, so it starts at all the way at the beginning at level one, and it'll take you up to uh, about level 11. So this is also, this is an adventure, but it's also a campaign setting, correct? Yes, so in much the same way that Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frost Maiden, really presents 10 towns in that region of the North and the Forgotten Realms as a place for endless adventure. The same is done here with Dragonlance, or with the world of Kryn. We give you everything that you need to know about the deities of Kryn. We do an overview of the lands of Kryn, the people of Kryn, setting all of that up and then really throw you into, and now let's tell a story focused in Eastern Salamnia. You have the framework for the rest of the world. You have an incredible map of the lands of Ancelon, but really the, the focus is on this corner for that one adventure, for the one adventure that is provided in the course of, uh, in the, course of the book. Now, that's not to say that you can't go and build your own. We try to create a adventure that really highlights some of the best of the Dragonland setting. Draconians, Knights of Salamnia, the various forces of the Dragon Queen. If you then want to take everything that we provide and tell your own stories, perhaps you know, in the village of Solace, or in the Urgoth region, or down in icy ice wall, you can do all of those things and tell your own stories against the backdrop of the War of the Lance. And we hope folks do. We really love to hear what other war stories folks can tell in this setting.